guys. So I said that I would make a podcast, like covering the materials we did not have time to cover in class. And what I really want to talk about, like in the beginning of this podcast, it's hormonal regulation of bone growth. Well, what I think is important for you guys to understand here is that there are essentially like um, um, three hormones here, that, that are, uh, four hormones that will affect uh, the, the, the bone growth. The first one of them, it's the growth hormone. The second uh, uh, that will also affect that is the thyroid hormone. It, it has an indirect effect, but it also very important is effect. And then the other two would be testosterone, testosterone. No, oh, well, let me spell that. And estrogen. So those would be all the actors. Uh, on this system. Let, let's start with growth hormone. What this growth hormone is doing, it's it, it, it essentially it's stimulating that uh, epiphyseal plate uh, to, to become more active. So it stimulates epiphyseal plate. This is very simple. Activity. So in, in, in these cells, uh, I explained that in the lab, if you came to the lab this week, um, how this uh, 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 the the formation of uh, the growth of bone in the epiphyseal plate actually occurs. I, I'm going to review that like in, towards the, the end of this this podcast. But for now, that's what you guys need to know about it. The other hormone here is the thyroid hormone. What the thyroid hormone is actually doing here is is, is uh, modulating the activity of the, of the growth hormone. So it modulates the activity of the growth hormone. How is it, is it doing that? Well, it's simple. It's actually actually in synergism with the growth hormone. It, and and uh, if you actually have, uh, you depend on, like, on both of them because this thyroid hormone establishes the, the basic metabolic rate of your body, so it provides the nutrients necessary for growth. But if you have like an, an imbalance, if you have like very little uh, um, thyroid hormone, it can actually halt the entire um, uh, bone maturation. So let's see if I can find something here on Google. I already like pulled that up. Like I had that. I knew I would be talking about this. So let's see if I can find like better images than what Wikipedia has. So this is a disease called cretinism. In in Part of the, uh, aside from having like these kids with credentism have this uh, mental delay, the their bone maturation um, is also halted by, by this. I'm trying to see like, like a typical case here. Perhaps this kid here is the best one. Like the kid with credentism has this myxedema, like so it has a puffness of their, their, their face as well. Um, anyway, but look back to our... Uh, to the control, the hormonal control of um, of bone growth. The other two hormones that are acting there, it, it, there as I mentioned before, is testosterone and estrogen. I'm going to put like the, the two hormones here, and you guys are all familiar that these two hormones are actually acting in in, in bone growth, uh, especially during at, at puberty. So what these uh, Especially testosterone will be doing, and like in doing in, uh, 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 adolescence, what what this guy will actually be doing, it will promote adolescent growth spurts. As some of you uh, can can probably relate to that. We always have like this cousin that used to be. Uh, Five four, and then uh, out of n nowhere, in one year, he becomes six two. Uh, and some people, it's not unheard for some people to grow like three four inches uh, in, in one year. And and what these other two hormones will be doing is that they end uh, at the same time that they stimulate the growth uh, of these growths, stimulate the growth spurts here. At the end of adolescence, they will be promoting the 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 closure. Of the epiphyseal plate, so so they end growth by uh, inducing epiphyseal plate 
closure. It makes sense, right? Because the epithelial place is the, the one that is responsible for growth in length. So we're not talking lots about hormonal regulation um, of bone growth. And because the book does not bring too much details about it, and, and we actually see other hormones acting in bone growth and when you actually cover the endocrine system. So what I want to talk about right now is this process known as bone remodeling. And, and in the book, um, we're going a little bit more detail about the, the, the physiology of this. And, and forget like to, to mention what the importance of bone remodeling. So I actually found this website for you guys from the the American Association for for Bone Research. Bone, um, bone. And, and they have like this. I'm gonna put the link like on, 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 on the bar below of this video, but. They, they actually have this very good link that is very instructional showing what is happening in doing the growth of long bones. And um, let me click here. So this is talking about endochondrosification and they're they calling endochondrosification what is happening at the epiphyseal plate that we covered that in class. So we'll, let's m move it along because this is going to demonstrate the formation of new bone uh, under the growth plate. So if everything is fine, this is what it should be. Um, you have like some bo um, bone being formed here. You get like the thickness of the bone here. You know, I don't know if you can see the, the this in in green here. And and but the bone is it needs to be reabsorbed to maintain its correct shape. So this is essentially what the bone uh, remodeling process that that maintains the correct shape of, of that bone. So this process keeps going on, and you have like bone production, bone resorption bone deposit, bone resorption, and, and so on and so forth. Here, here in this next slide, you, you're actually going to see that this does not happen like in, in, as a two-step process. You don't have uh, bone deposit and then bone followed by bone resorption. This is a continuous process. So this will actually maintain the shape of, of, the, uh, of the bone. And you can see how, how the whole thing actually well, how is that how that is important because as you grow you tend to maintain the shape of the bone all right it it, it sounds obvious but um it, it's not quite that obvious i, I know some of you are going to say like oh the water one on the, on the bottom looks um bigger it's this is actually like a not good illusion uh, for for that if you actually over like put this on, like on top of this image here it's a, it's the same shape the same size, like check how those guys are lying here on the side. But let's see what happens next. So, what would happen if the osteoclast did not resorb bone? Here's what would happen. So, as this, um, the head of the bone will get like thicker and thicker, and so would be the sides of it. Like, it, it, you have to rely on this perfect balance of the osteoblasts opposing the forces of the osteoclast, so you can actually have like bone that is formed like with the right shape. So here's a, uh, I thought I find this very interesting. This is a, uh, a medication known as pamidronate, whose which side effect is actually like essentially this: it it blocks the 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 uh, the action of osteoclasts, so you don't have bone resorption, and you can see what would happen. Like you have these bones with these huge heads, and it, of course, the, this person we have. Uh, uh, lots of problems in, in trying to um, to move. Well, I mean, or, or it, 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 the, the whole skeleton would have problems for that matter, right? Uh, all the articulations would be completely messed up because of, of this structure. All right, so now let's go back to, to my notations here so I can make it a little bit more interesting for you guys now that you have, know why, why bone remodeling or bone modeling, you can call it both ways, is important. So first thing that is happening is bone deposit. And in order to have bone deposit, uh, uh, this, this will occur when, when bone is injured or, or when you, um, you need to add strength or, or bone is actually just growing there. So bone deposit occurs for, for this um, because, because of the, this, this process. So um, it occurs when bone is injured, uh, when added strength is needed, and 
and I would add that when when end bone is actually growing, uh, like during when growth in length. But in order for this to have to, to happen, you, you all can relate to that because you know the bone is made out of calcium. Calcium. So we, and uh, this process requires then uh, good nutrition. Nutrition. And uh, so you're gonna have to have like a diet that is very rich in protein, vitamins, but especially vitamin D. Let's not forget that this is uh, very important because this is gonna be precursor of, of, of calcium later on. Vitamin D, C, A, and also like absorbing calcium as well. Um, there are other like compounds like phosphor, magnesium, manganese. There, there are many other ones that are important for here, like that are, 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 are trace elements in, in bone uh, matrix. But for now, this is this is good enough. Uh, and then the other process that is actually happening here is bone resorption. So. While this process here of, of, of bone deposit is actually happening because of, of, of the action of osteoblasts, here it's through the action of osteoclasts. What the osteoclasts are doing during bone resorption, they're actually secreting these lysozymal enzymes. Secrete lysosomal enzymes. And these enzymes will essentially digest organic matrix. So very, very, very simple here for you guys. And but but this is not the only mechanism that you, uh, the, the, the through which these osteoclasts are acting. These osteoclasts, which are fused um, uh, white blood cells, fused monocytes, um, they are also um, seeking acids. That can convert calcium salts into soluble forms, and when they do that, and they they, they 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 convert calcium to soluble forms, and then the they the after they do this conversion, they do the endocytosis, endocytosis of that. Um, uh, digested or, or dissolved the uh, uh, bone material you know as they do that they actually um, deposit this in, in, into the interstitial fluid and then blood and then blood and then as I told this, followed by deposition of, of this material in, in interstitial fluid and blood. That said, I can actually move on to to the control of, of remodeling. And the control of remodeling is going to happen through two processes. The first one of them is actually uh, a response to mechanical and gravitational forces. As I mentioned in class, bone is plastic. And if you apply stress to that, bone it will respond to that so let's write it down gravitational forces the second one of them it's a hormonal control and I'm gonna put like an mp3 file file online in which you can guys uh, can understand how this hormonal control uh, is affecting bone um, bone remodeling but essentially there'll be two hormones here the parathyroid hormone and calcitonin and that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Thank you.